Hi, and welcome to Healthcare Matters, where the medical and legal communities come together to discuss healthcare matters. Today's guest is John Degnan. John's a shareholder with Briggs & Morgan in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where he specializes in business litigation, including medical professional liability. John has represented clients with electronic medical record issues and has experience with HIPAA and the High Tech Act. Welcome to Healthcare Matters, John. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. How has the move from paper medical records to electronic medical records affected best practices for entering data into a patient's chart? And what guidance would you give physicians so that they're using best practices when entering data into their patient's medical records? Well, overall, I think it's a very positive move because it leads to a lot more continuity even across different medical providers. However, uh, there's some adjustments that I think have to be made by uh, physicians. For example, the most important thing is to make sure that the uh, drop-downs or checklists that are used are absolutely accurate for that individual patient. Uh, close doesn't count, obviously, in, in charting. And so if indeed some of the drop-downs don't exactly capture what the situation is for that physician, it's very important to be able to free text or explain it so that at the time it's accurately recorded so that later on it'll, uh, it'll help not only in the care for patients but in the event of any claim or question about the care. Uh, the other is to be careful about corrections uh, being made. It should be done like it used to be, that is making it clear that there are tracks in the snow because there are some providers that allow for uh, deletions but uh, some of them then later on show up only as deletions and doesn't show what's deleted so it looks like some record is destroyed. So it's very important to leave what I call the tracks in the snow. Okay, so even a, a benign deletion could be considered to be uh, nefarious. Absolutely. We had one case uh, in which uh, it was good care, defensible case, but there were about 10 items where there were deletions of just simple words. But the way that that provider had it set up, all it showed was deletion. And so it looked like destroyed evidence. There was an adverse inference called for. In other words, that it must have been bad, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, or they wouldn't have destroyed it. It led to a, a case that should have been defended but couldn't be, and the cost for it was about two to three times what the value was just because of the prejudicial nature of that. A recent RANCORP American Medical Society study called for a complete design overhaul of electronic me medical records to improve their usability. If you had the opportunity to advise a uh, EMR industry on a redesign of its products, what changes would most benefit the defensibility of a medical malpractice claim? I think updating the system, one of the uh, best systems out was still based on a DOS or pre-DOS system and so when copies of the records are made in a paper form, they don't resemble what the physician saw at the time. So uh, even with that system to write reports so that uh, you get exactly the copies uh, that replicate or resemble what was on the uh, computer at the time, or also designing a way for the computer to be replicated so that, uh, again, later on, someone can look at exactly what the physician saw at the time. An EMR's audit log and access log can often be the Achilles heel when defending a malpractice claim. Can you explain the audit access log to our viewers? how plaintiff's counsel can exploit it, and how a healthcare professional can avoid these specific pitfalls when using an EMR or electronic medical record. These audits uh, capture virtually everything that uh, has taken place in the records. That is, each time someone enters it, it records exactly who was in the record when, what was done with the record. And so it can be the physician's or medical provider's best friend or worst enemy. In other words, it can exactly duplicate or, or show what 
uh, was done at the time, and oftentimes that'll even maybe help to avoid a claim. On the other hand, if changes are made and they're not clear, or as uh, we referred to, the, um, the changes and deletions and don't show what it is, uh, the uh, other side can use that to show that, gee, they must be uh, destroying evidence, hiding something, and then they get um, the benefit of telling the jury it must have been bad. And even in, in regulatory systems, responding to subpoenas by the state or federal governments. Uh, it's very important so that it, it can be uh, easily seen and it, it avoids issues that uh, could be raised by that entity. HIPAA data breaches are emerging as one of the largest systemic risks for a hospital or a large group uh, in the modern healthcare delivery system. What risk management advice would you give physician clients for maintaining HIPAA confidentiality within their EMR system? Well, I think overall the medical providers do a good job and in many ways it's uh, probably as secure or more secure than the old paper records. Uh, but there are certain steps that can be taken, particularly though uh, I think there's a tension obviously with the provider always trying to protect the confidentiality and yet looking for ways to improve accessibility, particularly later on. As, as we indicated, uh, if you want to show later on exactly what the physician was looking at at the time, it's important to have a system so that uh, one can look at the computer again and see exactly what the physician saw at the time. And I think there are ways to do it, but they have to pay particular attention to it, putting it together up front when they're um, putting the um, uh, records system in place. In your defense of medical liability claims, what have been the most common errors or liabilities in a physician's use of electronic medical records, and how do you f advise your physician clients to avoid these sp specific errors and liabilities in the future? Well, the medical records uh, that are electronic in nature are very um, user-friendly in many ways once a provider gets to use them and they're more efficient. However, with all the drop-downs and checklists, one has to be careful to make sure that it's absolutely accurate that captures the system or the situation with that particular patient at that time. And if uh, none of the drop-downs exactly portray what the physician is seeing, then you pick the best one but also go on to do whatever necessary in terms of free texting to be sure that it captures exactly what the situation is. The other new issue that's starting to arise is the, uh, the way that we communicate now is so often not only by email but by text. Uh, and even some physicians are doing this with the patients. Text should be avoided, obviously, because no one can um, maintain the record of that. And emails are fine as long as they're within the system, like my chart is one of the common ones around in our region. Uh, that allows for communicating basically with an email with your physician, but it's captured within the system so that it's preserved. Uh, what one wants to avoid is not to uh, email back and forth with Gmail because there's no way to really maintain a complete record of the communications with the patients. Fantastic. Well, I'd like to thank John Degnan for coming on our, on our show today. It's been a pleasure, and I hope you'll come back soon. Well, I hope I'm invited back. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you.